Hi folks, we're gonna go do a little foraging today. Uh, what is available in our area right now is uh, goldenrod and uh, ironweed um, and uh, jewelweed. <laughs> jewelweed that Lee's gonna get for me. <laughs> yeah, because uh, the jewelweed is down in the woods and I just don't wanna go down there today. Uh, actually, it's Sunday, and I've been to church this morning, and I'm going back to church this afternoon. I don't want to get all dirty and sweaty and... <laughs> I don't want to get all dirty and sweaty and all that. So, Lee's going to go get my jewel weed for me so that I can get that going in some oil for my jewel weed soap and salve that I sell. Uh, we have an Etsy store now with uh, uh, 11. I think we have 11 products on our Etsy store now. So uh, check that out. Um, I do need for sure to get some goldenrod going. We've used a lot of that uh, for, um, uh, for my granddaughter's UTI and uh, sinus allergy issues and cold and flu. Uh, I use that. I usually dry my goldenrod. Um, I like to have dried, I, I dry it all. Um, I like to have some dried for tea, and then I like to dry it and use some and make tinctures. And I've used most all of that because we've had a lot going on lately. Uh, and But it is time to pick it right now. It's actually almost too late because it needs to be picked before it flowers completely out. And some of it is flowering out uh, quite a bit. But I was sick and, and didn't get out and get any. Uh, there is still some, I think, that, that we can get. Uh, so I'm going to show that. And we've got tons of ironweed growing in our pasture right now. And uh, so it's been really hot and dry here. And it's best to get the root of the ironweed. We're not going to be able to get any root unless we get some rain. So uh, I'm going to show that though and tell you a little bit about that. And um, like I said, Lee will get my jewelweed for me. I am going to get some um, pokeberries. So, uh, <laughs> so um, that's kind of controversial about the pokeberries. Um, I have a reason for it. And um, um, it's not for everyone unless you, you really got to know what you're doing with pokeberry or poke root. So um, uh, that's kind of for another video. I'll just say that I do um, uh, make tinctures out of poke root and I do put pokeberries in my freezer for use, but it's not, it's, it's, it's very, very strong medicine. It's like, uh, I want to say almost like narcotics. It's not something everybody needs to be just using unless you really know what you're doing and really have a desperate need for it. I haven't had a desperate need for it, but for some reason, I feel like it's God's medicine and God keeps telling me to keep some on hand. And uh, so I won't go into a lot of that, but I am going to get me some poke berries and put in the freezer and... Um, I don't think I'll do any root. I've got some root going and I haven't used, I won't use it, haven't used it. I won't use it unless it's an absolute emergency and I can't get anything else for that uh, big of a problem. Anyway, that's all I'm gonna say about the poke. Um, that's kind of for a whole different video. I learned a lot about poke root from my dad and, um, and, and you know, not something everybody needs to be using unless you absolutely understand it and know about it. And then uh, I also had uh, uh, learned a little bit of it later in, you know, a couple of years ago from April at She Is Of The Woods. And it made me start thinking about saving some again. And, um, or, or saving some. I'd never saved it before until I heard her talk about it. But I knew that my dad had used it. And uh, so, anyway, that's all I'll say about the poke root. But let's go forward some other stuff. 
So there's ironweed. It's that purple flower uh, that you see this time of year in the fall. And it is just all over our pasture. Pasture. Our pasture is covered in it this year. And uh, let's see. I thought I'd done some tincture with it a couple of years ago. And uh, see how tall that is? That is probably eight foot tall. And that is Vernonia Giganti. Uh, it is giant ironweed, Vernona Giganti. There's different kinds of Vernona. And um, so, uh, let's see if I can get this down here. There is, I don't know if it's going to focus in good on that. There is the flower. Uh, seeing if I could get all those out there have lots of flowers on them. And this one is, okay, there we go. There we go. That's what the flower looks like. And you can see them all out through there. I don't know if you can see that. Out yonder, out there, there's just tons of it. All out in our pasture this year. And uh, I thought, you know, to me, when you have an abundance of something like that, is kind of, to me, a sign to uh, that you may need that soon. So it's time to collect it up because you may need that soon. Now, um, you can use the flowers and the leaves, but the best uh, medicinal, uh, most medicinal is the, <clears throat> most medicinal is the um, root. And it has been so hot and dry here that there is no way I can dig down and get any root. So I'm not going to get that right now. I'm going to hope we get enough rain to um, be able to dig up some of that root. I may tie a ribbon around uh, a bunch of it. The Native Americans used it for female problems like um, uh, menstrual and, um, you know, PMS type cramps and things like that. And for childbirth pain, uh, they would uh, use the root. And uh, it's also good for uh, like toothache. Uh, I think that I would take the root and make a tincture and, uh, and put it on a, a, a toothache pane. Um, that's probably how I would use it. It's also said to be good for fever and headaches and uh, kidney stones. And I read that it was good for dandruff. So, uh, I'm not sure how you would use that. I probably just would use the root tincture and rub it in your head, I suppose. I didn't look that up, but uh, did read that it was uh, good for dandruff. So, I don't know. It is a good pollinator um, attractor. Uh, the butterflies love it. The uh, birds love it. The bees, all of that. They love it. There's butterflies out there on it right now. Um, on a lot of it. I don't know if I can show that. I, let's see. There's a whole bunch of it right in there. And there's butterflies all over it. See? Yeah. <laughs> so it is a pollinator. Attracts, attracts pollinators. So uh, anyway, that is tall ironweed. Or um, Vernonia giganti and we have a ton of it this year so i'm definitely going to get some of that and get some of the root tincture made uh, the last time i made it two years ago i used flower and leaves and uh, then i learned after that i learned that the root was the most potent so i am going to get some root and make a tincture with that this year I'm in the, you know, same pasture. I've just walked up here a little further and was going to show how much of this. It's just all out through there. That's up closer to the front of our property. Same pasture. Pasture. Same pasture, but up close to the front. Just all out through there. 
there's my beauty berry that Miss Lily over at Higgs Rock Farm, uh, Miss Lily gave me a cutting from a beauty berry she has. And it is doing so good. It was just a small cutting two years ago that she gave me and now it's just loaded. Now this is not the American Beauty Berry. So um, it's still useful, but not as medicinal as the American Beauty Berry. I think this is called um, Japanese Beauty Berry. And uh, there is a difference. They look quite a bit alike but the american beauty berry has berries all the way around the stem instead of just on one side of the stem they would have berries all the way around the stem and the leaves are a little bit different this one um you can still make jelly with the berries but it is not have the same uh properties that would make it a good um uh mosquito repellent so with the american beauty berry you can take the leaves and you can kind of crush them up and it has a smell that um, keeps mosquitoes away this japanese one does not have that but you can use the berries so uh, anyway it's still a beautiful beautiful bush okay goldenrod Goldenrod is everywhere right now. <laughs> it is all over western Kentucky. It is actually considered the Kentucky state flower because it is so uh, prolific and abundant here. It's everywhere. Uh, if you come to Kentucky, you will see a field full of goldenrod somewhere um, all over the place probably every field <laughs> and sides of the road and um, it is very medicinal um, <clears throat> edible and medicinal um, goldenrod is solidago and uh, this variety there are different solidagos um, this variety I believe is called a a tall um, I can't remember right this moment, um, but it's a, um, they're, they're all alike. They all have the same medicinal properties and all of that. They are great at attracting pollinators and, uh, and all of that. Anyway, they're all solidago and, um, in the Asteray family. <clears throat> and, um, so it has, all the varieties of solidago have, um, saponins that are antifungal so it makes it good for uh, lots of different things we use it mostly for utis and allergy allergy uh, season um, make a, a tea out of it i dry it and then make a tea out of it and i also make tinctures out of it um, because the tinctures will last way longer and um and, and, you know, use those. But when I have it dried, I usually do a tea. But, the, of course, the dried herb, the dried plant will only last about two years. And, um, and then it's not as potent. So that's why I go ahead and make tinctures out of um, most everything also. Uh, but this you will see everywhere. Um, I think probably all over the United States. I think it grows all over the United States, but it is so abundant here in Kentucky that, like I said, it's called the state flower here. Uh, but um, <clears throat> goldenrod is diuretic, so it's good for UTIs and kidney stones. Uh, it's also good for inf inflammation and blood pressure. Uh, it's great for infections, uh, sinus and allergy infections, and colds and flu. Um, they, I did read where you need to avoid it if you're allergic to latex. And there are some people who are allergic to latex, so keep that in mind. If you're allergic to latex, you probably can't take this. I don't know why. I don't know the exact you know compounds in it that are similar to latex or or whatever but that's what i read <laughs> so um anyway 
I'm going to get some of this, the best time to get it. It is real close to the best time to get it. It's almost past. Some of that is a little full blooming, but some of it's not too bad. So like I'm gonna take this one here, for instance. It is got buds on it, but they are not completely bloomed out. So it's kind of perfect timing. I could have done it maybe two weeks ago, but I've been sick and uh, and uh, and busy and just hadn't got out here to get it. So I'm gonna cut. You can do that. You can use the leaves and the flower tops, and I'm just gonna cut whole pieces, big pieces, and hang it up to dry. Lots of times I like to dry my uh, material before I uh, make a tincture out of it. Sometimes I just don't have time to do that or um, uh, you don't always have to do that, but I like to do that. So I will hang some of this up to dry um, and then use it for tea. And uh, that's one reason also that you wanna get it maybe just before this stage so that you can hang it up to dry without those uh, flowers actually puffing out and, um, uh, you know, they'll puff out and kind of frizz out and you'll lose some of that. Um, and so it's really best to get it just about here or just a little before. And I'll show you one that's almost too late that is pretty bloomed out over here. So let me go over here and show that. This is at the front of our property also, but see how this one is really bloomed out. And so if you take that and hang it up to dry, that's gonna kind of puff on out and you're gonna lose some of that. Um, but uh, you could use it, not saying you couldn't use it. You could still use that if that's what you, you know, all you had. But the leaves and the flowers and uh, some of this is still not really puffed out good, especially that one I showed. Here's a good one. Here's a really good one. This one has still got kind of buds that are not flowered out good yet. So that'll be a real good one to use. Here's a little one. It's just not flowered out yet. They still have like buds. So I'll be cutting some of those. We did run out this year. So um, it was highly unusual for us to run out of it, but we had a grandchild have a UTI several times and used it. And um, Lee has sinus allergy problems a lot. And I did this year, I had a lot of allergy problems for the first time ever. Um, usually don't have them maybe once in a while, but this year I had quite a few uh, flare ups of allergies. So we're gonna get plenty of it this year. So there you go, there is Saladago. Uh, the variety that we have here. So, uh, anyway, there's what we have. So uh, thanks for watching. I will take some of this to the house, hang it up to dry, and maybe I will make a follow-up video a little later on about making the tincture. And uh, maybe, hopefully, if I get some of this dried and I'm able to get some of the um, ironweed root, I will do a follow-up follow-up video of doing both of those tinctures so uh there you go it's a beautiful day here today it's been so hot and dry and now it's feels like fall so there you go we are blessed blessed by the lord to have so much uh so many plants that he has given us to eat and for medicine and uh, um, we just need to learn, relearn. <laughs> we need to relearn what all is edible and medicinal that the Lord has given us. And uh, me and Lee are blessed because we have so much of it here on our property. We have uh, eight acres in Western Kentucky and we have so much uh, foraging here we can do. And we've showed a lot of that. So if you haven't seen our foraging playlist, go watch that. I think it's called Wild wild Foraging or something like that. And then we've got a Walk in the Woods playlist that has some on it. So be sure you go check out our foraging videos uh, showing what all we have here on our property. 
and um, and hopefully you have some of that on your property or near you that you can utilize so thanks for watching give us a thumbs up comment and subscribe